Hi everyone, it's Michael. So today I'm going to go over a very well-known theorem in geometry. Um, it's Heron's formula. So it's just a formula for the area of a triangle in terms of the lengths of the three sides. So if the sides are A, B, and C, then the area is the square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C, where S is half the perimeter. So you're starting out with a really simple idea, just figure out the area of the triangle in terms of the sides, and yet it leads to a formula that's pretty non-trivial. Um, so in this video, I'm going to try to prove it. Um, and a lot of you may have already seen a proof, but if you'd like to try to find a simpler one, or if you've never seen one before, feel free to, feel free to pause the video. All right, so now I'm going to go over the solution. So there's a bunch of ways to prove this through um, trigonometry, through a lot of algebra bashing, um, and a lot of them are just very ugly um, and don't give much insight into why this is true. Um, but I went on a certain website, um, Geometry from the Land of the Incas, or gogeometry.com. Um, it's run by a, a man named Antonio Gutierrez, and it's a very beautiful site. Um, and it gives a proof of this that I feel like really explains why the theorem is true. Um, so th that proof kind of really makes me satisfied that I understand this formula a little better. Um, and it involves both the in-center and the x-center of a triangle. So I don't think I've ever done a video involving the x-center or the x-circle of a triangle, but I figure it's probably about time. And so this is going to be that video. Um, and people that do a lot of Olympiad geometry will, will realize that when you construct the in-center and the x-center and you draw the points of tangency, um, you get a lot of these different lengths involved. And so it kind of makes sense to do that. All right. Okay, so how do we start out? So I'm going to start out by drawing the in-center and the x-center. So i is the in-center, and I'm going to draw the in-circle and the tangency points. Um, and before I draw the x-center, um, first, I'm going to prove a well-known fact about triangles, that the area is equal to the, the in-radius, which we'll call r, times the semi-perimeter s. So that's not too hard to see. Um, so the area of the triangle, which we're calling k from the problem statement, it has to equal the area of bic plus the area of aic plus the area of aib. And each of those, you can just do base times height divided by 2. So BIC is half of R times BC, and we can do the same thing with the other um, two triangles. And then BC, the side length BC is A, um, and the same we can do with CA and AB. I think I forgot to put a plus here. But um, from there, it's very easy to combine the algebra. So R is half of um, A plus B plus C. So R is the radius times the semi-perimeter. Uh, so like I mentioned, that's a well-known formula that a lot of people who are familiar with Olympiad geometry will just sort of know. Okay, so how do we get this to look like this? So it's a little tricky. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to try to calculate the area of the triangle in a whole new way. And then I'm going to multiply it with this other one and take the square root. And that's how I'm going to try to get this. So that's sort of the strategy here. All right. So now I'm going to draw the x circle, and we're going to see how that's relevant. So the x circle, it's the circle that's tangent to the lines A, B, B, C, and A, C, except um, it's um, tangent to A, C on the other side of A, C. So I'm going to draw it and show you what that means. Um, and one thing I want to note is that, um, so there I've drawn it. Um, so the x circle, it's tangent to the lines uh, BA and BC, but it's tangent to AC on the opposite side that the in circle was. And the center of that x circle, um, I'm going to move things a little bit, the center of it has to lie on the angle bisectors of three different angles. So uh, first of all, it lies on the angle bisector of ABC. Um, and that's true because it has to be equidistant to the lines AB and BC. And then it also has to lie on the angle bisectors of uh, GAC and HCA um, because it's equidistant to 
each of those pairs of sides, okay? And, and, and I'm gonna use this fact later, but so kind of similar to the idea that the internal in center has to be on the angle bisector of all three angles, okay? And now we have a lot of common tangents. So, so BF and BD are both tangent to the in circle, CD and CL are, I'm sorry, CD and CE are both tangent, AE and AF are both tangent, and then we have even more than that. We have um, uh, AN and AL are tangent, and CK and CL are tangent to the X circle. Um, and any two tangents from a single point to a circle are always equal. Um, so I'm gonna use this fact over and over again. Um, so people who are uh, do a lot of Olympiad geometry will realize that due to all those equalities, BD equals BF, AF equals AE, CD equals CE, etc., uh, we can find a lot of formulas for those segments in terms of S minus A, S minus B, and S minus C. Uh, so I'm going to write that out here. Um, so this is what I mentioned before, BD equals BF, A equals AF, and CE equals CD. And we can utilize this fact to find formulas for all three of these. Um, so BD and BF, um, if you take A plus C, so the side AB and the side AC, um, and you add them together, but then you subtract um, B, which is AC, well, since AF, since C is BF plus AF, um, and, and you're subtracting AE, the, the AF and the AE would cancel, and similarly, the CD and the CE would cancel. So really, you just have, if um, BD is half of A plus C minus B. Um, and if you work it out, that's actually just S minus B. Um, so people familiar with Olympiad geometry will just recognize that, that BD has to equal BF has to equal S minus B. And we can similarly get expressions for the others. So AE and AF has to equal S minus A, and CE and CD has to equal S minus C. Okay. So that's that so far. Now I'm going to try to get expressions for CK, CL, AN, and AL. Okay. And I'm going to use the same idea. In fact, I forgot to mention one other thing. We have another two tangents from a point to a circle. Um, BK and BN are both tangents to the X circle, and so they also have to be equal. So we're going to use this fact over and over. Um, this is what I mentioned. So CK and CL have to be equal because they're both tangents, and AN and AL have to be equal. Um, and so we can do a few calculations. Um, so here I'm going to add the two, and you'll see why later. But CK plus AN has to be CL plus AL, and that's B. So that's kind of why I added them, because I wanted to use the fact that the two of them have to add up to B. Okay. And now I'm going to use the fact that um, the segment BK is equal to the segment BN um, to get a different expression involving CK and AN. Okay, so if we start with AN, um, it's equal to BN minus C. Um, that's clear. And then BN minus C has to equal BK minus C um, because those are two tangents to the X circle. And BK has to equal CK plus A, um, which is apparent from the figure. So we have AN is CK plus A minus C. And above, we have another equation involving CK and AN. So if you substitute this in for AN and you solve for CK uh, with just a little bit of algebra, which I'm not going to do, but very basic algebra, uh, you get CK is equal to S minus A. So basically, almost all the tangents of the circles uh, we have in we have either equal to s minus a, s minus b, or s minus c. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I like I mentioned, I'm going to try to find the area um, k another way. So previously I found it this way. Now I'm going to try to find it a different way. Um, 
But before I do that, uh, note that BK as a whole has to be A plus CK, and we showed CK as S minus A, so BK as a whole has to just be S. Um, okay, so BK and BN are both equal to S. And now here's the other way that I'm gonna find the area of ABC, which is a little bit tricky. Um, so I'm letting the brackets denote area. I don't know if I mentioned that in the beginning, but the area of ABC has to be the area of uh, B uh, N J K, so the sort of kite minus uh, the area A N J K C, so the kite minus the pentagon. Uh, if you subtract those two, you're left with just the area of ABC. And why am I doing that? Because these can actually be computed fairly easily, believe it or not. Um, so since BNJK is a kite, um, its area is twice uh, BJK. Um, so, so, and then also, if you look at ANJKC, um, basically triangle JKC, if you reflect it over JC, you get triangle JLC. And triangle ANJ, if you reflect it over AJ, you get triangle AJL. And so from there, it's very easy to see that the area of this pentagon has to be twice uh, the area of triangle AJC using that reflection. Okay, so another sort of little clever trick there. Um, and, the area, and the areas of both of those, we can just use base times height over two. So the area of BJK um, I'm letting RB be the radius of the X circle, but it would be RB times uh, BK over two. And we said BK was S, okay? So the area BJK, twice the area of triangle BJK, it's just RB times S. And twice the area of triangle AJC, well, um, JL would be the radius RB and AC is just B. So twice the area would just be RB times B. And then we can factor out the RB. So that's just RB times S minus B. All right, so we're starting to get somewhere because we have two different expressions for K and we can multiply them together as I mentioned. Um, whoops, I moved it over a little bit. Um, I think that's because when I did this before I didn't have enough room on the right side, so I had to move it over, but turns out now I do. Um, but anyways, so k squared is equal to, if you multiply these two, it's r times rb times s times s minus b. Um, and so we want to show basically that r times rb is equal to s minus a times s minus c, because uh, that would solve the problem. And people, again, this is another fact that people familiar with uh, in the circles and x circles will recognize, but we can find this product r times rb using similar triangles. Um, so it turns out, and it's not too hard, and I'm going to show this, that triangle IDC is similar to triangle JCK, okay? Um, and the reason is because angle ICD uh, basically, the internal and external bisectors of any angles have to be perpendicular. And so from there, we would get that angle ICD uh, is 90 minus angle ICK. And so since they're both right triangles, they have to be similar. Uh, so I'm going to write out that idea a little bit, um, make a little more space here. Um, but basically, if you look at angle ICD plus angle JCK, I claim they have to add up to 90 because ICD is half angle ACB and JCK is half angle ACH um, by the property of the X center that it has to lie on the angle bisectors. So if you take half of ACB and half of ACK, well, that's just half of 180, so that's 90. So if, if angles ICD and angle JCK add up to 90, well, since ICD and JCK are both right triangles, they have to in fact be similar right triangles. And from there, we can get ratios involving R and RB. Um, so now it's looking like the problem is about to be solved. 
Um, so basically, we, we would have ID over DC is CK over JK, and ID is R. So, so, so I'm going to write it out. So, so ID is R, uh, DC is S minus C, as we mentioned, um, and then CK is S minus A, and then uh, JK is RB. So, the, so we're saying the ratios of the legs have to be the same. And from there, we get the product RRB that we wanted, which is S minus A times S minus C. And then if you substitute it back in, uh, you get Heron's formula. So just take a square root and you get K is equal to the square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C. So this is the only real proof of Heron's formula that I feel like really gets to the root of why it's true rather than sort of just algebra bashing it. Um, so I was pretty happy when I saw this. Um, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks, everyone.